NASCAR is headed to the Lone Star State as we leave behind the high banks of Bristol for the high speed of Austin's Circuit of the Americas. They're eight wide, all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom. And the question on everyone's mind, will it be a road course ringer or a regular who gets the win? We're gonna round up all the picks to let you know who you should avoid and who might just last for themselves a trophy down at Coda. Tyler Reddick had to survive here at the Circuit of the Americas. Plus, we'll let you know all the ways you can keep it weird in Austin. We've got a Texas-sized, action-packed episode coming up on Around the Track. Welcome to this week's episode of Around the Track. I'm Kim Kuhn alongside Ryan Flores, and you made your money this weekend in Bristol, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a <laughs> surprise for everybody, but it was, it was awesome. I looked around that last pit cycle, that green flag cycle there mm -hmm. and it was smoke and fire and rubber everywhere it was a lot of fun and uh it's pretty exciting to be a part of yeah exciting action at bristol but the excitement doesn't end because this weekend nascar heads to their first road course circuit of the Americas. so let's take a look at the weekend's schedule yeah we're gonna all three series back on tap this weekend we're gonna start with a double header on saturday trucks at 1 30 xfinity cars following at 5 p.m all leading us to the big show the mm -hmm. cup race sunday at 3 30 but Let's start with that doubleheader on Saturday. What are you fired up to see? Oh, gosh. Well, the field is stacked in the Xfinity Series. you got Kyle Larson in the Hendrick car. You have Ed Jones and Sage Karam. IndyCar fans will recognize those names. They're for Han Sam Hunt Racing. They'll be in those cars. Daniel Kvyat, ex-Formula One driver. I think people are fired up about that. And then SVG. Yeah. Yeah, we saw what he, we saw what he did in uh, Chicago, and he was fast in Indy in the Cup car, too. But... First time in the Xfinity car. Yeah, and, and I talked to AJ Allmendinger this past weekend, kind of previewing Circuit of the Americas, and he actually said he feels like SVG is going to be even better in the Xfinity Series car. Something about his driving style fits that car better at road courses, at least in AJ's opinion. So I'm excited to see. That's yeah, crazy to me. I thought that the Cup car would be a little bit closer to V8 Supercar, but I guess I'm, we're going to find yeah, out, I'm right? Excited to see what, what he can do. Some other guys in the Truck Series event, Connor Zilich, we'll mm -hmm. talk about later. Ross Chastain getting making his uh, first Truck start of the year, but. A lot, of going, a lot of racing going on outside of Coda as well. Let's take a look at what there is on tap this weekend. So a lot going on at Coda, but a lot going on away from Coda. What are you looking forward to most outside of Austin this Gosh, weekend? Gosh, so much action for the race fans this weekend. Arkham Menard Series East, they're going to be down in Florida at Pensacola. Also have some action from the Cars Tour. And then NASCAR Mexico also taken to the track this weekend, as well as American Flat Track. They're going to be in Georgia, just south of Atlanta at Sonoy. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a modified guy, born and raised, and the Smart Tour at South Boston, the king of the modifieds, $20,000 a win. That's maybe the highest paying mm -hmm. asphalt modified race I remember in a long time. Guys like Jimmy Blewett, Ryan Newman, Matt oh. Hirschman, Doug Kobe, alongside of some young guns, Carson Lofton, he's got a couple wins this year. Tommy Baldwin's son, Luke Baldwin. Oh, okay, be, that's a name be, I uh, recognize. Yeah, they'll be running hard for 20 grand, so I'm excited to watch that, 3 p.m. on Flow on Saturday, but... The gnarliest form of racing, American flat track. Oh, you yeah. know all about that. Tell me some about that. Yeah, I used to cover that. It's it's bar bang and it's a dirt track, so it's going to favor drivers who race on good groove tracks. Last year, Jared Meese won this race. Uh, he needs a strong showing. The first two rounds at Daytona, kind of a mediocre start, so looking to defend his win at Sonoy this year. But, you know, there's some other guys that could perform. You look at Brandon Robinson, Davis Fisher, Dallas Daniels, Jared Vanderkoy, all could podium this weekend. So it should be a lot of good action in Georgia. I heard you mention Sonoy. Yeah. That's where they're Sonoy, Georgia. Yeah. Another guy from Sonoy, Bubba Pollard. Oh. He'll be, he'll be in the ARCA race of Connecting Pensacola. Connecting all the dots. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So he'll be in the ARCA race of Pensacola. He's making an Xfinity debut at Richmond for, uh, for Junior Motorsports in a couple weeks. So I'll be definitely keeping an eye on him as well. Nice. And all of this racing action culminates on Sunday with the Cup Series race at Circuit of the Americas. And we thought we'd preview the racing action from there. So he, let's hear from a driver who has top four finishes in all three starts there, including a win. Ross Chastain. So starting the lap at Coda, you have a ton of elevation up. You have a ton of potential in the brake zone to really use the brakes, a lot of tire grip. And then from there, you never have that elevation again. You slowly lose it through turn two. And then when you get to the S's, the rest of the track might as well just be perfectly flat. Just a lot of little nuances in the long back stretch. A chance to draft a little bit, try to catch the guy in front of us, and a big brake zone with a little bit of downhill into turn well, that ultimately sets us up for the stadium section. A lot of lefts, a lot of rights, just one then the other, back and forth, left, right, kind of drawing circles with the car. If you were looking at it from overhead, finishing up with two left-handers that are just get all you can get. Turn 19 is a rodeo cowboy, hit the curb, fly up in the air, clip the grass if you can. 
get to turn 20, you're home free. So Ross took us for a lap for three and a half miles, 20 corners, mm -hmm. elevation changes, drafting, the S's, a rodeo cowboy right? corner. Right? I was like, what? Scratching my head there. I love that Ross was so cool, calm and collected, walking through that lap. I assure you, in the race car, none of the drivers this weekend are going to be that calm. Yeah, and, and it's it's super exciting. The, the strategy is going to be a little bit different this mm -hmm. year than it was at this race last year. They have stages back. and. Teams are going to have their hands full, but it starts with practice and qualifying on Saturday, 10 a.m., FS2, all leads us like we've been talking about to the Cup Race Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Fox. And this is the first road course of the season. We've seen five different winners in the first five races. I think there could be a six different winner this season because if we look back, the first three winners in the three first Coda races are winless on the 2024 season. Looking at the notes, we might have picked the same guy, but you're going to have to wait and see who our fantasy picks are. Yeah, let's look back at their victories. And Ross Chastain beats and bangs his way to the checkered flag. Three of his four wins come on the road course. Tyler Reddick, Masters Circuit of the Americas. It's time for Easy Money with E. Erica Davis, our resident sports betting analyst, is joining us now. And I hope you paid attention to her last week. She said, put your money on Denny Hamlin. Well, that paid out. Erica, you have got to be feeling good after Bristol. Kim, I am feeling I'm on top of the world because I did have four bets on Hamlin that hit last week. So Bristol was a very, very, very good day. Well, I would say it certainly was. You hit the jackpot with Hamlin. So we're going to lean on you extra hard this week to get ready for the first road course of the season. What are some of the best bets for the weekend in Austin? Yeah, with road courses, Kim, Coda, a multitude of things could unfold. So I'm going to start off with outright winners bets. Um, there are three different drivers whose outright winners odds that I'm eyeing. And the first one is William Byarnett plus a thousand, where $10 bet on him would win you a total of $110. Now, in his last two road courses, Byron won at Watkins Glen and he finished second at the Roval. So he's my first outright winners odds that I like. My second is A.J. Allmendinger at plus $1,600. $10 bet there wins you a total of $170. Now, A.J., he's got three Coda starts under his belt. He's got three wins at three different road courses, including last year at the Roval. And then my final um, best bet for outright winner would be Daniel Suarez. At the, be at the beginning of this season, I talked about kind of being high on Daniel Suarez having himself, himself a season this year. Right now, he's plus 2500 where a $10 bet on him wins you a total of $260. Kim, think about how Trackhouse runs at COTA. Ross Chastain won here in 2022. And then Suarez, you know, he's led laps at COTA. So those are the three drivers whose odds that I like to win outright. Okay, so we're talking best bets. We're talking road courses. I know fans are going to want to know, what about Shane Van Gisbergen? He's making his first cup start of the year. How are the odds looking for him? So, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Right now, SVG is at plus 1,600. And I actually, Kim, don't mind that spot at all. He won last year's Chicago Street Course. And, you know, as we know, he is a full-time Xfinity driver. And for me, I believe that because he runs, runs Xfinity full-time, he gets that extra practice time, which gives him a leg up. So he's a little bit more prepared when he runs on Sunday. So I like SVG at plus 1600. And then I got one more to throw out there. A long shot bet, Kim. Um, Brad Keselowski at plus 10,000. That's, again, a long shot where a $10 bet would win you a total of $1,010. But I like Brad as a long shot bet for this weekend in Austin. I would agree. Brad K at Coda is a long shot. However, he does have momentum from a top three finish at Bristol. And as we're talking drivers that might have momentum, Martin Truex Jr. finished second at Bristol. He also won at a road course last season, taking home the hardware at Sonoma. So where does Martin Truex Jr. stack up? I like Martin Truex Jr.'s head-to-head, -head, Kim. There's a head-to-head -head matchup with him and uh, Chase Elliott. So Truex is plus 110 and Chase Elliott is minus 130. As I've talked about before, head-to-head -head matchups are prop bets where you don't have to pick the outright winner. You just got to pick the driver to have a better finish than the other driver. And at Truex at plus 110, how could you not go with him in this spot? He's running well so far this year. He's got the hot hand, but more importantly than that, he has a legit road course resume. He's got five wins at road courses. So 
Truex plus money is a really good value. All right, what's the final bets that people should be watching out for this weekend? Yeah, the final bet, Kim, I like the market for top 10 odds. And there's two drivers. There are two drivers whose odds I like. I like Tyler Reddick at minus 500. And I also like Chase Elliott at minus 300. Now, Tyler Reddick at minus 500, a $10 bet would win you a total of $12. Um, he's finished in the top 10 in all three of his CODA starts. But again, $12 total you know, payout is not going to send you laughing to the bank. So if you want something a little bit spicier, a little bit sexier, you can throw a few, um, a few bucks on Tyler Reddick's top three odds at plus 160. And then you got Chase Elliott. Yeah, you know, he he finished fourth in this race in 2022 and he won this race in 2021. And I think I think we forget that about him because he has so much rust to, to shake off before he gets back to being a, a true road course ringer. But at minus 300, it's a safe bet. And because we've sprinkled a little bit of money around on longer odds for outrights, this is a spot where you could win some of your money back. So those are my best bets for this weekend at Austin. I love it. I love it. Chase Elliott, he's got to knock off that road course rust, like you said. Great information, Erica. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. And before the Cup Series drivers take to the track on Sunday, it's going to be the tough trucks of NASCAR that battle it out on Saturday. And there are a few drivers in the field you need to know. The first one is Tyler Ankrum. There's one thing that's been consistent, Tyler Ankrum. That's exactly <laughs> right. New team for Tyler Ankrum. Are you ready for more? Tyler Ankrum is on a 102 race winless streak, but that's a fact that no longer concerns him. What about that move by Ankrum? Up to second. He's strolling. I love the road courses, and I don't know why, but I just have a knack for them. All my racing starts on road courses or have been in the NASCAR trucks. I think our time's coming. Are you ready for more? Like Michael Waltrip alluded to there at the beginning of that video, Tyler Akram, the model of consistency, worst qualifying effort of ninth this year, worst finish of 11th. That makes him our Craftsman Truck points leader. Oof. He's a proven winner. He's won an uh, ARCA championship. He's won Craftsman Truck races before. What does it take for him to get the job done at Coda Ooh. this weekend? Well, what job? Winning the race, I don't know that that's his race to win, but I do think he can keep the points lead. You know, what a move by him to go to McAnally. I think that's the big thing in this picture we're looking at here. Their trucks are so good this year. Christian Eckes winning last week, Tyler Ankrum the points leader. And when I talked to him after the Bristol race, he just had a confidence that I have not seen in any previous season from him. Yeah, we'll see if he can get it done on the road courses. But one guy that has been getting it done outside of NASCAR yeah. road courses, that's Connor Zilich. Zellish is going to grab himself an all-pro limited win at Florence. Just trying to make one more run and not able to get to the back bumper. Connor Zilch will be your winner tonight. They know the feeling now of winning at Daytona. Here are Motorsports celebrate. And there is the 17-year-old Connor Zillich. Looking at a snapshot of Connor Zillich's Young career. He's only 17 years old. What stands out to you about him? There is a ton of buzz around this kid. And the number one thing that stands out to me there, track house development driver. Oof. Justin Marks has pegged him for a reason. We saw in that video, he has won on all types of racetracks. Yeah, already being tapped by a Cup Series team is a big deal. You look at what he's been able to do in a sports car. He won at Daytona and Sebring, which I think is a good predictor of what he'll be able to do this weekend. Yeah, and a ton of late model wins as well in a, in a full, you know, full fendered car. This is his Truck Series debut, so it's his first time on the top three national stage. And he's going to make some starts for JRM when he uh, turns 18 in the Xfinity Series. So. I am excited to see what the future holds for this Yeah, guy. I think the sky's the limit. The trajectory he's going to have, I think he's going to be in the Cup Series sooner than later. Absolutely. All right, well, Connor Zillage may have already proved himself a road course specialist with his IMSA wins at Daytona and Sebring, and maybe in the future could be one of the best in the Cup Series. The field is stacked with some of the best drivers in the world. My question is why? Why is the Cup Series all of a sudden the apple of every driver's eye? Shane Van Gisbergen has been perfect.
road course racing has been a great opportunity for world-class talent to come mm -hmm. showcase their talents in NASCAR. The next-gen car has made it even more intriguing yeah. for some of those guys to come over being more like a sports car. Who are you most excited to see this weekend in Coda? Well, I, I first of all, completely agree. There's been this influx of international drivers, drivers from other series. You look at SVG coming in last year, dominating at Chicago. I'm excited to see what he's going to be able to do. First cup start this season for him. And then Kamui Kobayashi, I don't think he got a fair shot last year. He raced Indy, didn't have a lot of experience there. But this weekend at Coda, he has experience. He's raced there in both Formula One and WEC. I think that's going to do him justice. Now, when I think of ringers, right, I think the guys that created that term are like the Ron Fellows and the Boris says, yeah. not full-time yeah. guys. I think they're guys that come in for one-off races. So, like, I have a tough time – putting A.J. Allmendinger on that list now that he's a full-time guy, even though he shows up at the road courses. I've even seen people put Chase Elliott on that <laughs> list, and I'm like, wait, wait, wait. No, no, Just no, no, because no. he's won a bunch of road yeah. course races doesn't make him a ringer. He's he's one of ours. So I think the full-time guys stay out of that list, but the guys like SVG and Kobe Ashi, we saw Jensen Button last year. We've seen a bunch of guys mm -hmm. come in. It makes it really, really exciting. I think the definition of ringer has kind of changed over the years. Back to your point, like, they used to only run two road courses a year. Cup Series drivers, if they were full-time, didn't really worry about their performances on it. Now, with half a dozen road courses in the season, you have to be good regardless of whether you're full-time or you're what we call a ringer. And until the ringers start coming in and dominating and win, winning year after year, I don't know if you can call them a ringer anymore. One thing those guys have to get used to, though, when they come over is the, all the passing. Yeah. And with 20 corners here at Coda, there is a ton of passing zones. Let's hear what the drivers have to say about all the places to pass here at Coda. Nothing is comfortable about passing at Coda uh, because it's really easy to slide through the apex and wipe the guy out or get wiped out or spin out, really. I guess turn one on the restart, I mean, that's where people gouge their way in there and, and uh, it's a good place to pass somebody or get, get spun out. And I feel like I've done a really good job of getting spun out there the last few years that I've been there. Uh, just minding my own business and just getting destroyed. So um, maybe I have to change up what I do there and be more of a prick getting into that corner. Ooh, a little spicy Blaney. He was also salty after Bristol. I think that's all going to like come to a head and he's going to be really aggressive at Coda. <laughs> I have felt, I feel that in my soul, you know, working for him for so long, getting spun out at here. It feels mm -hmm. like every time we go to a road course, we work so hard and we just end up getting spun out oh. at the end of the day, kind of not by anything of our own fault, just victim of circumstance, but they are moving the restart zone back a little bit like they did at Indy to try to help the dive bombs maybe, in turn one. Maybe the drivers can take a breath. Yeah, we'll see We'll see if it works or not. Yeah, speaking of turn one, that 133-foot hill climb to that left-hander, sharp left-hander, and then turns two through nine, it feels like a quick succession of turns where you really have to be on your game, so technical. Yeah, it's super technical, and then you get in a long back stretch where they're drafting, Back into the cowboy mm -hmm. corner in the yeah. stadium section, as Ross Chastain pointed out. So a lot of opportunities for people to be good or bad this weekend. Yeah, the good thing is, though, I, I do think they can take a little bit more risk because there's runoff areas. So it's not like if you take a risk, you're going to absolutely wreck your car, depending on where you are on the track. Yeah, and there's rules in that, you know, for the runoff areas. We've seen guys get too low mm -hmm. and, and have to do a pass through. So very technical. It's a driver's racetrack. And. We'll see how it all plays out. Yeah, we'll see. And now that we've gotten you set up for Coda, it's time to make your fantasy pick. So let's start. Who is your must-have for this weekend? My must-have, it's, it's his first cup race. You're not going to have him all year in your lineups. Okay. It's SVG. Uh, you got to go with him. Like what he did at Chicago. Then he backed it up with the top ten at Indy. He's probably sick of these ovals by now. Yeah. The start of the year and ready to get to something that, that fits his driving style. I'm going with SVG. Well, I thought about picking SVG, but that's a good point. He's going to have extra seat time in the Xfinity Series before he gets into the cup car. So speaking of extra seat time, Ross Chastain, he's going to be in the Truck Series race. That's going to kind of get him going. And then his record here at Coda is so good. Top four finishes in all three starts, including a win. And so I'm pulling for Ross as my must-have. Can't go wrong with the watermelon man. Who, who are you staying away from? Who's your black flag this week? Oh, black flag. It's got to be Bubba Wallace. I know that he has been working harder on his craft on road courses, but he's just not there for me. He has to have more consistency. His best finish at Coda, 37th. So I'm staying away, far away from Bubba Wallace this weekend. I would happen to agree with you, but I think Tyler Reddick has brought some more to that team, and I saw him get a little bit better mm -hmm. at road courses the end of last year, especially uh, I think he did really well at, at Charlotte, mm -hmm. the Roval. So I'm hoping for good things with yeah. Bubba. One guy I'm staying away from, though, is Josh Berry. Oh. And I, the reason I bring up Josh Berry, he had a great week last week in Bristol. But it was a short track. It was managing tires. It was everything that he is used to mm -hmm. doing in the late model stocks that he comes from. One thing he's never done before oh. is a road course start <laughs> in a cup car. So 
I wouldn't ride the wave of Josh Berry too high from last week. I would definitely not have him in my starting lineup this week. All right, what about outright race winner pick? Who are you going with? After last year, it's got to be Tyler mm. Reddick. What about you? Yeah, I, I'm putting my money on Tyler, too. I, I didn't know that Ryan was going to pick Tyler, but after last year, and he's won three of the last ten road course races, I, I think it's his weekend. Yeah, I mean, he... He's the guy. He, he has it figured he out. Everybody but <laughs> so bad here last year, and you picked him, so I feel even more confident about it. So I'm ready to get to Coda. There's a ton of fun stuff happening at and around the racetrack this weekend. What are you looking forward to once you get there? Well, there's this coffee cup series kind of debuting this weekend. It's going to be Michael Waltrip and Kyle Petty, and what I'm envisioning is almost like a fireside chat. We know KP is so good at that storytelling and free coffee. I'm a coffee girl, and so I might have to find my way out there and get a cup of coffee. Are you a coffee snob? Uh, a little bit of a coffee <laughs> stop. So I might judge a little bit too hard, but I, I am tried and true. I take it black, so I don't need any of the uh, extra accoutrements, the sugar, the milk, none of that. Same, same, but I'm looking forward to Trackside Live with Jose yeah. this weekend, Camper Appreciation Party. It's got a live auction mm -hmm. and a Riley Green pre race Ooh, concert. So nice. I, I'm pretty excited. There's a lot of fun stuff going on. Yeah, in that's perfect. I mean, Austin's kind of a second music city to like Nashville. So I love that there's a pre race concert. Yeah, for sure. And you can catch everything that's going on there at NASCAR at Coda.com. All right, it's time for the white flag to wave. And I've got a little trivia this weekend for you. Mm. Are you ready? It's Austin trivia. That's, but uh, to, to the racetrack, it's actually Coda trivia. Okay. All right, so when you see the Coda racetrack, What's the thing that stands out to you? Uh, other than that big climb in the turn one, it's that tall uh, pagoda that they got there. Yeah, so the observation tower, do you know how tall it is? I don't know. Um, I've been on top of it. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. And I would say that judging off of feet, I would equate it to almost like a football field. So okay. that's three, so I'd say maybe 300 feet. You're close, 251 feet. Ooh. Do you know how many stories that is? Uh, is it 25? Close, 22 stories. And then I, I have another uh, a kind of caveat a to this. A a another little nugget. You can either take the elevator or the stairs. There, and the elevator only goes all the way up and all the way down. There's no stopping That's in right. between. Yeah. How many stairs does it take to get to the top? Um, let's say 2,000. <sighs> no, not even close. Uh, what is it? You were good on the height guess. Dang, not good. I was guessing 10. It's, the, the good thing is it's only going to take you 419 steps oh, to get to the okay. top. Okay. You got a little pre-workout, a pre-race workout? Nope, I'm good. I'll just <laughs> watch everybody and wave and get ready. I'll do a little stretch on pit road. I'll stay away from that thing. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you watching around the track this week. Yep, we'll catch us here each and every week. Next week, we're heading to Richmond.